now we're ready to do the his story. So for those of you who are visiting with us, the his story is a story of one man in the congregation's journey. He gives me his story written in his own words, in his own way. I sit with spirit. I take that story. And what spirit gives to me, I rewrite the story. The person hears the story when I read it to the congregation for the first time. Okay. So this morning, blessed beyond belief. Y'all don't get me again this Sunday. Blessed beyond belief. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. I had a childhood that for all intents and purposes was pretty normal. I didn't have a big family. My parents, my sister, my aunt, uncle, and grandfather. That's it. Although my parents would never have admitted it, my sister was definitely the favorite. My parents were very strict. Seems to me that I had to do everything. Chores, cleaning, cooking, shopping, you name it, I did it. Every summer, I would escape to the country. It was Connecticut, but it was still country to me because it was nothing like the city. I had a very special bond with my Uncle Rob. He owned a barber shop, and my aunt had an ABC store. My uncle took time with me. He taught me how to cut grass and hedges, drive a car, and barbecue. And most times, he would pay me for doing whatever the chore was. One summer, I even went to Boy Scouts. My grandfather lived across town from my family in the city. Every year, he took us shopping for our new school stuff. He would tell me stories of when he worked in the coal mines. I liked his stories. Well, maybe not all of them. I didn't like the one where he told me that I was an accident. I was pretty sheltered. My dad believed in the big three. No, not reading, writing, and arithmetic. He believed in homework, chores, and bedtime. There was definitely no hanging out for me with friends. He was very strict. If my grades weren't up to snuff, I would hear about it when he came home from his 12-hour shift as a corrections officer at the prison downtown. My mom worked until she couldn't work anymore due to her health. She lost both her kidneys and was a dialysis patient for more than 30 years. Since mama couldn't work, my dad had to pick up the extra work to make ends meet. My father had a strong work ethic. We didn't want for anything. I saw that and I knew I wanted to be just like him. In high school, I loved sports. I played all sports, basketball, track, football. Sports is where I really bonded with my dad. We played racquetball, handball, basketball, and we even jogged together. He never let me win. He made me earn it and earn it I did, and I became just as good as he was. I was very gifted. I could draw cartoon characters just like in the newspaper, but fashion, now that was my everything. I wanted to go to college at the Fashion Institute to learn to design women's clothes and maybe one day design, na design name brand jeans with my own name as the brand. My cartoon drawings put me on the map in high school. They really caught on and everybody wanted them. So my popularity grew and everybody knew exactly who I was. I wasn't much with the ladies, though I did have a high school sweetheart in my sophomore year. She was very popular, outgoing, and we were in the same grade. I mean, I didn't really know her, know her for real. I knew of her, but I watched and I adored her from afar. I didn't have the nerves to approach her. One day in our senior year, she was gone, just gone. I didn't know where she had gone or if she was coming back, she was just gone. She wasn't the only thing I lost in my senior year. My dreams of going to fashion design school were dashed. My father couldn't afford to pay the tuition because he was still paying all the bills due to mama's health. My grandfather said that he would pay, but he never did. So I'm out of school, can't go to college, and I don't have a job. I started working small jobs at the supermarket and in different newspaper routes, but deep inside of me, I just knew there had to be more than this. 
My father, in his wisdom, took me down to 42nd Street in Times Square and signed me up for the Navy. I didn't want to leave home, but I knew it was my best option at the time. As it turns out, that summer I spent as a Boy Scout paid off because I had worked in the kitchen and was familiar with baking cakes, breads, rolls, and even a few meal meals. So it was a natural fit for me to take the route to culinary school, and I did. I became a Navy chef. It was the best thing to happen to me. The culinary school was in California, and coming from New York to beautiful California weather, had never seen anything like it. I was very good at what I did. I made rank quickly over the next several years, but I blew my money. I didn't know anything about saving. As long as I had a place to sleep and a place to eat, I was good. I had this guy working for me. He was out of control, didn't follow the orders, didn't want to be in the Navy. I took him under my wing and we became friends. One morning at breakfast, he told me that he was from Bronx, New York, like me, except he was raised on the other side of town. So we planned to take the three hour ride together back home. I introduced him to my family and he introduced me to his. He also wanted me to meet his godmother. When we got to his godmother's house, he says to a young lady, hey, I want you to see, come down and meet my friend from the Navy. I looked up and there she was, hanging out of the window, my high school sweetheart. I never thought that I would see her again. I met her mom and all of her brothers and sisters. She had a lot of brothers and sisters. They all loved me. I sat and talked with her for hours. She told me that she left school to care for her one-year-old son. Wow, I was in total awe. I didn't know that that day, that chance ride back to the Bronx to visit a friend's godmother would change the trajectory of my entire life forever. We dated for a while, then I took her to meet my parents. To my utter surprise and heartache, my parents didn't approve of her because she had a child. I was devastated. They told me that I could do better. I couldn't. They just didn't know I couldn't because I was never going to even try. I already loved her and that was that. I was going to make it work. It was my decision to make and my decision put distance between me and my family. We got married in Connecticut on February 14th, 1991. My wife was something else, but in a good way. She took care of herself, worked hard and always knew what she wanted. For years, I had just been going along with the flow, but she gave my life direction. We had only one difference, going to church. Oh no, that's not for me. The times that I had gone in the past, I didn't know what the preacher was talking about and no one explained it to me. I only decided to give it a try because I love my wife. It was an Easter Sunday, so I went. Oh my God. There were children in the front of the church who seemed to be screaming. I was terrified. I jumped up and ran out of the church. She later explained to me that they were being baptized. Whatever. From that day on, I had a bad feeling about going to church. The guys on the boat would talk to me about church and I would give it another chance but I always ended up leaving the service early. I just didn't believe in God. I just didn't understand church. So she would go and I would stay home. By this time, my family was really distant and it seemed that they all became sick at the same time. My father developed kidney disease, just like my mom and my sister had sickle cell anemia. My father died in 1988. My mom died in 2007. My grandfather died in 2010. My sister died in 2012 after having a heart transplant and refusing to stop smoking. My uncle, who had taught me so much, he died from alcoholism. All of that death made me stronger somehow, but I still live with the regret 
of not having spent more time with them. Life was proving to me that it was short. My Navy career had taken its toll also. Because I deployed so much, I lost touch with my oldest son. I wasn't there to help mold him, and I missed a lot from my second son's early years. My wife was holding things down pretty much on her own, although I was providing financially. I had developed diabetes early in my Navy career, and it had not been properly treated. I had to stop. I had to refocus my life and my health for the family that I still had. I retired from the military after 20 years of service, and for me, it was a very hard adjustment to civilian life. I wanted to quit, and at times I thought to myself, I just can't do this. I was working, but not what I wanted to do. I started hanging out, drinking, having arguments with my wife, stupid things, just doing stupid things. I knew it was me, and I knew that I had to do better, but I just didn't know how. She kept asking me to go with her to church. Sometimes I went, sometimes I didn't. One day she told me that we were going to buy a house in Suffolk. I said, okay, because I knew that she would handle things. She believed that it would happen and it did. I realized through her faith that God had given us the house. So I started going to church with her. One more try, I thought. I met a lot of good people there and met the pastor, but something was still off. I just didn't understand what he was saying about the scriptures. I stopped going. I wanted to work for the postal service and unbeknownst to me, we had built our house beside the postmaster of Suffolk's house. I spoke with him and he got me in as a temp. Okay. Okay, God. You have to be real. My wife left her church and started going to a new church. She kept telling me, it's different. You're going to like it. I figured I would go and then she would leave me alone. I went once or twice. It was different. I actually understood what the pastor was talking about. The message was straight from the Bible and I could use it in my everyday life. I started to learn the scriptures, affirmations. I was learning more and more every time. I met the pastor and the first lady. I know now what I want to accomplish. I feel fulfilled. I learned that everything and anything is possible through God. I got saved. I joined West End. I became an usher. I look back over my life now and I see his blessings. He blessed me when I hadn't even asked. He blessed me with my wife and I can honestly say, that if it wasn't for her, I would probably be back in New York on a street corner. This year, God enabled us to build our forever home. This time, I played a big part with my own faith, my prayers, and my affirmations. Every day, in every way, by the grace of God, I am getting better and better. So there, that's my story. It's how I came to be who I am now. I am Brother Kenneth Venable.